My name is Steve Kinney, and I'm the front-end architect at Temporal. Client-side application performance can mean a lot of things, from the performance of every line of our code to how we distribute that application to our customers. In this course, we'll use AWS to build a enterprise-grade deployment infrastructure. We'll host our assets on S3. We'll use CloudFront to distribute around the world so it's quick and easy to load no matter where our customers are. We'll set up routing and certs using Amazon Certificate Manager. And we'll add custom functionality to our CDN using Lambda at Edge and CloudFront functions. And I hope you enjoy the course. One of the reasons, though, if you are going to get a new domain name that I would recommend doing in Route 53 is hooking it up to some of the other Amazon stuff is incredibly simple, right? If you host it somewhere else, then like it's going to be a little bit trickier, right? Um, and there are guides on how to point at Route 53 and then get the rest of that uh, for free. That's kind of somewhat outside the scope of this because each one will be slightly different. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and register a domain with Route 53 in this case. This is a totally optional part. If you don't want to do it, you don't have to. I'm going to like, I'm going to do it for anyone that needs to, right, uh, or wants to. But like, if you just want to use whatever the CloudFront domain that we get towards the end of this workshop is, totally fine. You won't, uh, you won't miss out on anything except like some ridiculous domain name as I live shop for domain names. Awesome. We're not even going to try to get a .com. We'll go ahead and say, what's a dot cheap? No, nope. I'm, I'm too cheap. <laughs> too cheap to pay for a dot cheap. I'm not paying $30 for a domain name. Dot click, where's dot click? Yeah, three, oh yeah. Uh, dot click is three bucks. We're gonna do that. Um, so we'll go ahead and say like, super awesome dot, oh, nope, don't put that space in there, autocomplete. Awesome, I'm gonna put that in my cart. I'll pay $3 for this domain name. I'm gonna pause for a moment in case you're doing this with me. I've done this now multiple times. And every time I put it in the cart and I look for the button to buy the domain name. Yeah, some of you are like, I don't see the button. Don't scroll, you gotta scroll all the way down and it's underneath the rest of the options of ones you could have put in your cart. It lives down there. It doesn't matter how many times I've done this. I literally just now was like, where's the button? And then I remembered how angry I get at this moment. Cool. Uh, at that point, you will put in your re registering contact. So I am also going to, we're going to cut to a break in a second, and I'm going to fill this piece out. So I've registered it. The one thing I want to point out is, theoretically, I have received an email. Uh, I have 15 days to verify that email. If not, they will suspend it. And they are reminding me that um, a suspended domain is not available on the internet, which is my understanding of what would happen if you suspended a domain. So if you are, if you right now want to go check, you can go absolutely do that. Uh, I'm not. I live dangerously. Also, I'm not super invested in this. So you can see domain registration is in progress. So that is good. We will kind of let that cook for a little bit. It's like a cooking show where you, you put something in the oven for a little bit, and maybe there's an already done turkey somewhere as well. Um, we'll let that cook, and we'll go back to setting up our S3 bucket. So with that, we'll say S3. One thing that you, we don't have to really worry about now because S3 is global, is there are certain things that, like for instance, some of the Lambda at Edge stuff that we're going to talk about, that is only available in US East 1. So I'm going to kind of point that out now and remind later. We're still not at that point yet. Um, but like right now, at this moment in Minneapolis, Minnesota, I am, you know, I guess closest to US East 2. Um, Denver gets me closer to US West. So it's real, real hit or miss when, where we make those decisions. But you, being US East 1 for this workshop is probably the easiest. Otherwise, you might have to sometimes jump over to US East 1 for things. So I will kind of point that out at some point. But S3 is global in this case, so we don't necessarily need to worry about it. Let's go ahead. We have two buttons that we can click for creating a bucket. Whichever one makes you happier. For me, personally, the orange one makes me happier. So I'm going to click that one. And we're going to give it a name. and. Super awesome. Click. 
And here's my first opportunity to put this in the right region. So I'm going to go put it in US East 1. Like I said, it's not a total requirement. Generally speaking, like if for some reason, like let's say this was a bucket that you were doing a bunch of data analytics and you needed to use it as like a data lake um, so you could process stuff from your local machines or stuff along those lines, you might choose a region closest to you. It doesn't always have to be US East 1 um, just for not, just to make sure we're all on the same page, both on the live stream and uh, you know, recording and in the room. Let's all just get in the same region. And let's make that US East 1 for you know, some reason, reasons. Not all Amazon features are available in all the regions, uh, but US East 1 almost always gets everything first. Um, so it's, it makes sense to just pick that one as our default in this case. All right, we don't seek to choose an existing bucket to copy our settings from. That should be obvious. Why? The reason, because we don't have one. OK, so then ACLs for specific objects, access control lists. Um, we're going to go with the recommended option here, which is don't do it. This is going to be a controversial section that we're going to have to, we're going to turn on and off at different points in our lives. Um, this is block all public access settings for the bucket. Um, at various times, there weren't as much rules around this. This is why people ended up with the public buckets. Um, sometimes there are also, you know, I've, I've heard stories where it's like, there was an outage, somebody made the bucket public real quick to go ahead and like fix something. And then the outage was over. The bucket was still public, right? Um, so, but it's tricky for us, right? We want to put a web page on the internet, people to look at publicly, right? So for us at this moment, we're going to turn it off because we don't have all the pieces we need to kind of uh, do the kind of wiring through AWS around this stuff. Um, so we're going to turn it off for now. And you can see that they are very, very strict about this. We will add some policies, stuff along those lines. Um, but for now, that is going to be the case. And we'll talk about different things that we can do at various points as well. OK, we talked about bucket versioning earlier in the slides. Uh, this was, again, like if you want to keep every previous version, um, we have Git, where we can go back to previous versions. Also, in the case of the React app that I have, Webpack is going to stamp each version. And like so the same way I told you that I don't delete the previous uh, generated files, it's kind of like I have my own versioning, right? Um, in my case. But if you were storing like things where you might need like all the previous versions of whatever that data was, you can turn versioning on. It does um, it does incur a cost because you, it's just more storage, right? So we're going to keep that disabled, and we'll have the tags. We don't. We're not going to be using them. We again also don't need server side encryption. Uh, in advanced settings, we don't need that either. And with that, I have my first bucket. You have this AWS command on your command line. Uh, it'll work with almost all the services. In this case, we want for S3. There's actually LS, like there is in Bash or what have you. Uh, at which point, I could say, like, okay, show me the contents of S3 colon slash slash, what is it, superawesome.click. And you can see the one file from today is in there, that index.html that I had uploaded, right? Um, sweet. Now, we could want to put some other stuff in there as well. Um, there's a bunch of different commands that you can play around with. But we're going to go with, uh, we're, in a, we're in an app. We're ready to rock and roll. And so we'll do like an npm run build. And that's, again, this is just create reactive. In my case, if there's a, another application you want to build, your, your npm script might be slightly different. This is the one that builds this file. And it will go ahead and spit it out. And it says, look, the build folder is ready to be deployed. Well, that's incredibly convenient for I am ready to deploy it. And so from the command line, we can do AWS S3. And we'll copy that build directory to s3 colon slash slash 
super awesome dot click, in my case, but whatever your bucket name is, like you do not have permission to deploy to my bucket because my policy, you can, you can get stuff from my bucket, now put stuff in my bucket. Um, I'm going to do dash dash recursive in this case. The, I don't think there are subdirectories in that build fold, but that will iterate down all of the different folders. Cool. I'm going to just, for the people in the room, move that up slightly. So that's what we have, and then I'm going to hit the button. And you can see that it is going through and uploading all of my various assets that are in that directory up to S3. What node version are you on? Probably the current LTS, 16. Um, that shouldn't matter, because uh, I don't think that has changed. Like, effectively, yeah, I guess for building the application, it might actually matter. Um, but for the actual AWS CLI, it won't. So we've got that in place. And now we can go back over to our bucket. I'll go to the S3 bucket here as well. Back over to objects. Give that page a refresh. And you can see that I have all of the files that I uploaded. Um, in this case, you can also see that uh, the index.html is from the same time as all the rest of the files, which means it overwrote that one we generate, one we uploaded by hand, and it is also twice the size. So now I should be able to go back down uh, and revisit the site. And here it is. It's got a bunch of different lorem ipsums. You can choose your favorite later, um, as well as a very large picture of the Beatles that took a few seconds to load, or like a few milliseconds as well. Um, it has some problems. You'll notice that very angry, not secure up there. It's not HTTPS. My um, URL leaves something to be desired. Right? The, there's some piece of it. It says super awesome dot click dot s3 dash website dash us east dash one dash dot amazon aws dot com. Also, if I go to one of these, um, there it's like client side route. You can see notes zombie. If I actually hit that, that file doesn't exist. The client side routing took care of it with the history API. But if I go to that file, it fundamentally breaks the web, right? And we talked a little bit before how S3 was a key value store. You'd be like, there's no such key called whatever that is, slash notes, slash zombie in this case. Um, so we should fix that at some point, because like our URL should probably work. At the very least, that's not the greatest error, but they should also just kind of work in this case. Um, so we should have some of that in place as well. Um, so there's a lot to be desired here. It's also currently hosted out of US East 1. So if you are pulling this particular URL up from a place that is not close to Virginia, like it will get progressively longer to load um, depending on how far away you are from that location. So we have the ability now to build an application, deploy it onto Amazon. But um, the kind of rest of our focus now is one, operationalizing that so we're not doing it by hand. Two, um, fix a bunch of problems around the HTTPS, the routing, the URL itself, the location, all of those pieces as well. That's the kind of next, uh, next kind of piece of this is to get all those parts in place. CloudFront can wrap anything. It can wrap an S3 bucket. That's totally cool. Um, it can you know, take your API endpoints that are hosted either on an Amazon EC2 instance, API gateway, your own data centers, so on and so forth. Uh, you can just point at something. It'll pass through CloudFront, and CloudFront will do all that caching, right? Um, but we can have it work with the S3 bucket as well. So we were just using the website that we were hosting. Um, we can also we can switch it to that bucket, right? Like I said, like just clicking on this from the drop-down menu. I think we were joking during one of the breaks. There are still blog posts out there saying whatever you do, don't pick that, unless you do this. So we know that it's the base one. And that'll work. And then we can turn on this, give it access to the S3 bucket. Because what would happen, what used to happen previously is you just pick that, but it didn't have like like all of that kind of like principal least privilege and stuff like that. Like it was like, oh, cool, I can't get anything. I can get you an error message. Thank you, CloudFront. That was very helpful of you. I'm really glad. So here we can say, okay, 
use this bucket, um, and then we will restrict access only to CloudFront. So we can go ahead. We can we can use what user effectively that's going to create. It's not really a full IAM user. Um, it's a origin access identity. Hit create for a new one. We've got that in place. Now, I'm going to warn you. Ideally, you just want to let CloudFront update the bucket's access policy. I've done this a few times. 50% of the time, it works every time. So we'll hit it, and I'm going to hit Save. And I did not get an error message. Now you notice the pause in my voice. Did anyone get an error message? So some people got an error message. Not everyone. All right, let's talk about what to do. It would be great if we all consistently got the error message or no one got the error message, but um, let's, uh, let's go for it. Um, you can even see that when it tried to do it and it failed, I was ready with a meme. <laughs> right? I was ready with a Thanos reference. Um, so we can kind of go in. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at the policy that we need to create. Um, and then we'll go ahead and apply it in the case that it didn't work uh, previously. So this is not much different than the policy that we set earlier, right? Before we said anything, or any one rather, was allowed to get things out of the bucket, right? When CloudFront made that OAI, it made some kind of identifier for it, right? And so all that we're going to do is we're going to go back over to our bucket, and we're going to say, OK, instead of anyone, only this one, only this user can access the bucket. This user happens to be CloudFront. And CloudFront will then be able to access the bucket. Nobody else will, which means if you want our sweet, sweet JavaScripts, you have to go through CloudFront to get it. Now. One thing that I will point out, again, I don't, it does not bring me joy, is if you look, if you go back at this, you're like, that starts with an E, right? And you go back to CloudFront, um, and you see, oh, this is, the, yeah, this is this. That's your CloudFront distribution ID. That is not your origin access identity ID. To find that, um, just go over here to the sidebar to origin access identities. That is the one you are looking for. It is the different set of random letters and numbers that start with an E that are roughly the same length in all caps. Do not use the previous one. That is the wrong one. Ask me how I know. <laughs> Don't ask me how I know because there's a lot of anger in the answer, right? Um, but uh, this is the value that you want. And before I'll give everyone a second to go do that, but uh, what we want to do is grab this, right? And you can head back into S3. Go find your bucket. Go to permissions. Find your policy. In my case, I still need to come in here and delete the everyone one anyway. So you should join me here anyway. Um, and basically, if it failed at putting it in there for you, you can either replace this star with this, but your identifier, or if you got it put in there for you, then you can delete the everyone has access piece. I will leave these here for now. They're, they're identical other than the fact that this one is saying CloudFront has access, and this one is saying everyone has access. So what we want to do is we want to delete this one. We want to keep this one or add this one if we didn't have it.